Hello, today I'm going to explain how to derive the Clapeyron equation using a general phase diagram and the definition of a chemical potential. So the chemical potential is essentially analogous to the potential energy. It always runs downhill, which means it always wants to minimize itself. For a general phase diagram, We have that in order to transition from one phase to another, infinitesimally slowly, we have a phase equilibrium in which the chemical potential of one phase, let's call it the liquid phase, is equal to the chemical potential of the other phase, which let's say is the gas phase. So we assume that we're looking at, let's say, a vaporization. Now the chemical potential is related to the Gibbs free energy it's equal to the molar Gibbs free energy, which we define as the Gibbs free energy over the moles. Now the Gibbs free energy has a Maxwell relation. So the Gibbs free energy as a function of temperature and pressure as its natural variables is defined as dg is equal to negative s dt plus v dp. Now since the Gibbs free energy has this max relation, the molar Gibbs free energy has this max relation. Then, since we can write the Maxwell relation for G molar, we can also write it for delta G molar. Now by definition, we wrote that G molar is also the chemical potential. So this is equal to D delta mu. And this delta mu is for the phase transition. We're assuming we're going from the liquid phase to the gas phase. But we said that the chemical potential for the liquid phase and the gas phase are equal in a phase equilibrium. That means this is equal to zero. This is now what we can do. Negative delta S molar dt plus delta V molar dp is equal to zero, as we said. So then delta S molar dt is equal to delta V molar dp. Now if we divide through by dt, and divide through by a change in molar volume. Then we get dp dt is equal to delta s molar over delta v molar. And this is what's called the slope of the phase phase coexistence curve. In this case, we're looking at the liquid to gas transition, so we're looking at the liquid vapor coexistence curve. Now that we are aware that we're looking at that slope, let's recall that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. For the molar Gibbs free energy, we also have molar, molar, and molar quantities for delta H and delta S. But we said that it's equal to zero. So delta S molar is equal to delta H molar over T, where T is the temperature in Kelvin. That means, plugging this in, we get delta H molar over T delta V molar. And this is the Clapeyron equation. And this concludes the derivation of the Clapeyron equation. Hope this helped you in some way, and I'll see you next time.